ranked I don't know which is a, a league and tournament system for any sports like uh, t- uh, table tennis or, or uh, um, squash or um, shuffleboards and the output company which is a publishing platform for digital magazines like targeting iOS web uh, and Kindle and eventually Android as well but today's talk about is about Convos. Uh, it's an HTML5 async Node.js-like application in Perl, according to the synopsis. So what does that really mean? What is async? What HTML features? And uh, like Node hole, why are we here? Why are Firetrucks red? And those are some of the talk questions I hope to cover in the talk, but uh, uh, others might must remain a mystery. Um, so often when I tell people that I made an RC client, they're going like, Merck, really? Didn't that die in the nineties? And yes, Merck mostly died, I guess. Uh, you don't often hear ASH location anymore on, on RC. Uh, but the Internet Relay Network, uh, the chat, still thrives. And uh, uh, I kind of like this quote that I saw on Twitter. RC is a chat network for people who run the Internet by at Chris Blizzard. Um, and as you might probably know, IRC is very popular in, um, in open source. Most open source projects that I use have their own IRC channel. IRCfreenode.org is full of them. And uh, in the Perl community, we even have our own network, IRC Perl.org. Uh, so, um, and Wikipedia also uses IRC to coordinate their efforts. They, they have bots that announce when ch- changes are made, and the Wikipedians are, are uh, uh, watching that. And, uh, screening the changes. So, uh, thanks to Screen and IRC2 and Lady Irsi, I was online on uh, IRC pretty much 24-7 from 1993 to 2010. Uh, but a few things started to bother me about this solution as the, uh, in later years. Uh, I couldn't get any desktop notifications, so uh, if I, I didn't have the terminal window open, I didn't see what was going on. Uh, and I didn't uh, really have good mobile clients. Of course, I have SSH for, for, for my tablets and phones and stuff, but uh, it's not a really practical solution, uh, which is why we decided to de- develop this application. Uh, so I got together with Jan Henning Torsen and started to make Convos. Actually, we called it Virk for first, but we renamed it later to not make it too similar to, to Mirk. Uh, but before I delve into the technology behind it, I want to go through the product itself. So uh, it's open source, and you can find it on uh, GitHub at norlock.norlock.convos. Uh, it's artistic license, like Perl itself, and you can go there and follow the installation instructions. It's quite easy. We have a one-line installation uh, script, which you can just download and run to, to get it started. Uh, and it, Pretty much only depends on having Perl and uh, a big working build environment and Redis. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to go through the installation any further, but once you have it up and running, this is the first screen you see. Uh, it's pretty standard sign up. If you, if you already have, a lo- have registered a user, the first screen uh, on, on your installation will be the login screen instead. Uh, And once you fill out and, and successfully register, uh, you meet this wizard which asks ask you which NIC you want to use and which uh, RG network you want to use as well. We have uh, some predefined networks in the setup, uh, and you can also list which channels you want to join. You can also use join later to, to add channels, but this is just the initial setup. Uh, however, if you're like using a, a work IRC or something in some network that we are do not support, you can also add the custom network. You just specify the name and the RC server you want to you connect to, the default channels to list for, and it will be added to that wizard for next time you, you for next user to connect as well. Uh, we do support SSL, but that requires an optional Perl dependency because uh, it, it requires libssl. So uh, if you run a Convos version, it will show you if you have that dependency installed or not. Uh, and once you, you, you connect to a network, it starts up like this. Uh, here you can see the, the first 
the uh, conversation in the list on the top top of hand here is always the Convos bot, which is a built-in uh, conversation bot that you can use to, to add and join servers. Uh, and eventually, we, we plan to grow that into a, um, uh, a lot more features. I'll come back, come back to that later. Uh, for now, you can, for instance, ask it slash help to get the list of what, what you need to do and things like that. So once it finishes connecting to the server, you can see here now it's connecting to to, uh, to uh, Convos, and once you connect, it will switch over to to our channel. Uh, so you can see here I'm connected. Uh, it will always sort this top list by the last visited channels. Uh, you see it says I'm only joined to Convos now. If you have more channels than you, than there is room for, it will add, put a drop down on on the end so that you you can see all your, your conversations. But it's very convenient because you often you are in many channels and, and you just switch back and forth between the last couple. We also have key bindings that let you. Uh, uh, if you press Shift Enter, you can to toggle between the input field and the channel list, so that you can easily just tab to the to the channel you want without using the mouse. Uh, and if uh, if we if we also we also have an avatar support, as you see here, the Convos bot always looks like it's running at the moment. Uh, but if we are able, you can specify an avatar, you will turn up like the, like I am in the list here, and. Uh, and the one we can't resolve, we will also try to resolve it based on host name and look it up in Gravatars. Uh, but if we can't resolve it, it will automatically generate a unique uh, avatar for you so that you can recognize the people you're talking to with through the same avatar all the time based on their host mask. Uh, you don't, you're always connected even if you close the browser. So if you go back, you will get a list of, of the things that have the notifications and mentions that you, you had while you were, you were gone. And uh, if you can also scroll back, uh, we're automatically loading more more chat as you scroll upwards, so that you can always see all your history. Um, we're using web sockets to do the communication, so it's it's uh, really quite fast as well and feels a bit native. As you can see here, we're using uh, CSS media queries so that we adapt to various screen sizes. It works on, on even on smartphones and tablets. Uh, if the screen is too narrow to fit the, users, the user list, it will automatically turn into a drop-down on the top, so you can find the users uh, by, by accessing the drop-down in the same way. Here you can see I have more channels and, there's, and, and conversations that are, there's room for in the list, so it, uh, it adds this uh, drop-down at the end there, so you can see all your conversations. Uh, we also support HTML desktop notifications, and we open source that separately from, from Convos. It's uh, Mojo.com called RC. We built it up I found a couple of useful modules on Cpol called RC Utils and Parse RC. So basically, we stitch those together with the Mojo IO, Mojo IO loop to create, create something like this. So you have uh, you create a new instance of the object to, and then uh, specify the nick and the user and the server, maybe password if you if you use password. And then you can set, up, set it up to listen to events. So if you get a join event, you can trigger a, a message. We have this core con connection that, that set that's using this module, and it triggers all of the different. Uh, it, it, for instance, if someone sends a message, it triggers the message event and both stores that into the Red Hat database and creates a push notification uh, to the published subscribe. Yeah. The last module that we've open sourced for from uh, based on building Convos is Malicious Plugin Asset Pack, and this is basically an asset pay pipeline that we use. Uh, it's not like a new idea, but it's a good one that you see in many other frameworks as well. Like uh, most Ruby frameworks are using uh, and Node.js frameworks are using uh, asset pipelines. So basically, you just define the assets that you use in your application. Uh, and from the start, we implemented all of the uh, uh, pre-RFC versions of the specification, uh, and uh, we were the first Perl framework to have full WebSocket support. We even now support per message uh, deflate, which was added to Chrome now in version 22, so that you can have compressed messages going over the socket. Uh, and this is how it looks in the in a malicious controller. This is a WebSocket connection to slash messages. 
So your JavaScript framework connects to trash messages, and then uh, we can uh, and then the browser keeps that connection open, and uh, we just uh, receive messages and send them back to the core system from the WebSocket, uh, and uh, we subscribe to Redis messages and send those over the WebSocket, so that we have a, a, a connection from the uh, independently running core all the way to the browser. In fact, the core doesn't have to run in the same instance as the, as the uh, front end, so you can easily scale it up if you have many users and, and set up several front ends that, that run against the same core. Of course, with all these callbacks uh, and small Redis operations, we do run into the problem of non-blocking order dependency. Sometimes you need to have something running after another callback, or you need to run a couple of operations in parallel and then run another operation. Uh, in, I think in, in some node samples you might have seen uh, what, what has been referred to as callback nesting hell, where you have like a callback inside a callback inside a callback. Uh, or even how do you do parallel processes. So the way we have solved this is with a built-in module in, in Moeulicious called Moeu EU Loop Delay, which lets you specify uh, in, in a uh, uh, um, seemingly sequential order how you, you run your things. Uh, I brought out up the example here from the, from the synopsis, which just shows that you can uh, uh, a simple example where it creates uh, a delay for uh, um, ten different actions. You can see here it sets up ten timers, and even though this this is created in in a, in a for loop, they are all added to the same. Uh, they will be running in the same order, so this will say uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then. No, 10, 9, 8, uh, 7, 6, 5, 4, and then boom. And you can see you can put in a hook so that when all your actions are finished, you can do a callback. So typically, you, in, the, in a, a controller action, you put this, uh, use the use the mode, um, delay uh, to do all your Redis operations, and then on, in your own finish hook, you do render, so you run the template and, or generate or HTML or JSON or whatever your action is. Uh, it's a little bit simpler, more realistic example of how we use it, uh, where we, I do two Redis operations in parallel and then uh, output the, the results when they're both finished. Yeah. So in addition to using uh, build, building this thing uh, on the malicious framework, we also stole uh, quite a bit of the Moyo culture. We so it means we do all our development on GitHub and uh, uh, accept changes to pull requests. We have a common Perl tidy RC, which we actually borrowed from the malicious project as well. So that means uh, we are now, since version 0.4, we are now running Perl tidy automatically on all commits so that the code base is coherent and we follow the same standard for every commit. So, uh, and we've also been focusing a lot on, on having a solid test suit uh, based on the same kind of principles that the malicious test suit uses. We use test con con mode mojo to test all for controller actions and, and things like that. Uh, yeah. So deploying this thing, my previous open source application it was uh, mojo mojo, a wiki based on the Catalyst framework and it was a little bit of a pain to install. It had a dependency chain of 417 CPAN modules and landed me on the CPAN heavy 100 top list. Uh, so that made it a little bit hard to install. If something breaks in that chain of 470 module, uh, 17 modules, you have a problem. So Converse has nine dependencies, including malicious, uh, and we, we also use Carton to bundle all of those dependencies with the distribution. So when you download the distribution, you actually know which version you're going to install. So I, the authors can't just ship a new version and break my application. And Mia Gava made this thing ba based on his experiences with Ruby. Carton is very similar to a Ruby project called Bundler, uh, where you bundle all the, the, the depths into the distro, and then it, when, on, on, on set of time, inst it installs it into lo the local directory. On, on your application, on your server. So even if you have other versions installed in the in the system Perl, it will use the, the local versions when you run that app. Uh, he also created the CPAN file format, which is uh, an easy way for applications to specify the dependencies. You know, CPAN modules uh, use the makefile PL uh, module uh, using module install or, or XTTL's makemaker. But those aren't really well suited for applications. 
So CPAN file is supported by CPAN M and, and Carton, and it allows you to specify your dependencies in a really simple file format. And you can also lock the versions to say, my application requires this version of the module at all times. Uh, so once we have that set up uh, and bundled, you use Carton exec to run the, your uh, your server with the given Carton dependencies. So typically, start to start. Uh, Convos, you do carton access, uh, exec convos uh, back, uh, backend, for instance, or convos server. Um, so if you run the server, by default, it will uh, run uh, the backend embedded, but if you want, you can also uh, run it separately uh, so that you can upgrade, for instance, the front end or restart the front end without disconnecting it from RC. In addition, uh, we have created a Docker file to make it easy to set, test this thing, uh, and we have a Docker trusted build. So whenever we do a release, Docker automatically rebuilds the Docker file and updates the, the code. And that means uh, I don't know if you looked at Docker, but it's a, a very simple standard container format, so that you can run uh, different applications with very little overhead inside their their own separate Linux environment. Uh, so you can do, if you have Docker installed, you can just pull and run, and it will start up Convos automatically without any further hassle. It's also possible to deploy Convos to Heroku. Uh, that the WebSocket support is in beta, so you have to enable that. Uh, but malicious confirms the PSCGI spec that the uh, Plaque uses, uh, so you can use Miyagawa's build pack to deploy to Heroku. And that was uh, deployment. So I'm going to move on to talking about. Uh, building the web frontend. Uh, so of course everything is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, and we start the, fir the first implementation. We started with a quite heavy uh, JS uh, MVC, uh, where we rendered all the templates client plus client side and uh, transferred it, uh, sent JSON over the web socket. And uh, we, think we ended up thinking that the solution was too complicated, so we just tore it out. And we're now simplified by generating all the server templates and the server side, and we're sending HTML over the wire. Even the RC messages are just uh, simple mar uh, HTML markup that we can push directly into the user interface. Uh, yeah. So in what, uh, rather than AJAX, we're using uh, yeah. uh We're also using HTML5 push state to uh, so that when you change the channels, we will actually update update the URLs. Uh, this uh, degrades gracefully, so if you have a, a old browser that do doesn't support it, it will just do a full page reload and you will have exactly the same URL. But this also means that we have good bookmarkable URLs. I don't know if you remember, but for a while there was this trend of having hash marks in your URL, which is really annoying because it breaks things and you can't do a curl to get the source or whatever and you will see different things. Uh, push state is a much better solution and it's supported in all modern br browsers. Uh, the way we implemented it was using uh, P, uh, jQuery PJAX, which was uh, a jQuery uh, module made by GitHub. They use it for their source tree navigator, where you, when you go up and down in the source tree, it also automatically looks like it's, it's uh, it, um, the, uh, updating uh, the, the URLs, but it's actually just doing AJAX uh, and JavaScript to change it. So here is how we set that up. Uh, for each of the different links, we specify which target that it should render it and, and which fragment it should use. Uh, and then we have a, a PJAX success trigger at the end, which uh, sets up everything based on the new information that we loaded into the, to the divs. Uh, yeah. We also started doing the design bootstrap. It's a really easy and fast way to, to prototype something. And you can make, it's great for making stuff like admin interfaces, but our experience was that if you want to make a really custom, uh, uh, specific UI, Bootstrap is more hassle than it's worked. So in the end, we tore it out uh, and uh, wrote a simple custom uh, media query based layout. And it was less work than trying to force Bootstrap to, to do exactly the things that we wanted. Bootstrap is great for the first 90%, but like you can struggle a lot with the last 10. Uh, yeah, so in, in the end, we, have, we decided to try to keep it simple, stupid for, for all of our uh, front end things. Uh, but we still met some problems. The first problem that we faced with the solution was 
IRC stops working when I move around. Whenever you close your laptop and go to somewhere else, the WebSocket closed and it never re never uh, reconnected once it was broken. Uh, so we used VS reconnecting, which is a simple module that you can find on, on uh, GitHub, and it, it will all, whenever your WebSocket connection is broken, it will try to reconnect, uh, and that solved it that for us. But uh, then still. IRC stopped working anyways, which was really puzzling for us for a long time. You had it open in your browser and eventually uh, it would disconnect or time out. Uh, and we were using the WebSocket ping frame, so we were expecting the Keep Alive to be working. But apparently Chrome doesn't really use those ping frames, so uh, we ended up having to create the, sending the, 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 a different solution. This is something we, saw, we found other people were doing as well. And we're just sending pings over standard WebSocket frames rather than using the specific, specific, specific WebSocket uh, ping frames. And that solved the problem and made, made it keep the connection alive. Because it stopped working and Chrome didn't even notice. It, was, uh, it, looked, it, it thought it was connected until you tried sending a message, but you weren't getting any new messages in. Yeah, of course, we also met Unicode problems. I think I meet those in every pro pro product, but uh, IRC has no real st standard uh, charity encoding. Many pe people use UTF-8, but some use Latin 1 or other fucked up Latin things. Uh, so, uh, Christian Hansen, Hansen has made this module called uh, Unicode UTF-8. It supports a fallback to Latin 1 if what you, it, the parses isn't a uh, valid Unicode. So that means that they can. Uh, we always send you Unicode out, but uh, if even if someone sends Latin one to us, we can parse it and handle it just like if, as if it was Unicode. Uh, yeah. So the next problem we met was uh, we've changed how we use our schemaless storage. How do we update all the existing users? So uh, we wrote Convos Upgrader, which runs a bunch of, bunch of migrations in order just to change your database, so we keep track of which version of, of the scheme uh, of the application you are using, and whenever you're upgrading, we automatically uh, can can transform uh, transform your ready schema uh, using the, the uh, run operation. So this is an example from the, one of the latest versions uh, where we removed uh, obsolete keys that were were not in use anymore, and those are we will automatically regenerated. So it's just cleaning up like that. Uh, so. Things that we plan to implement that we haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, we do plan to, to uh, as of uh, as of uh, 0.4, we have uh, had about one and a half years of development, and we have a minimum viable product. So we've been iterating until we we got it right. Uh, but uh, we want to implement search. We already do logging to file, so all your conversations will be logged to the server. But we plan to implement a, a pluggable indexer backend. Uh, we will probably just ship with AC uh, the, and, and the Lester search module, grep module, uh, and allow you to use Elasticsearch or SAPM or whatever by writing a different indexer. Uh, we also want native uh, mobile clients. Uh, luckily, IRC Cloud has open sourced their iOS and Android clients, so the current plan is to implement their API and then we will get the clients for free rather than having to implement Android and Nate and, and uh, uh, iOS clients ourselves. <coughs> and the next, uh, other thing we are we are looking into doing is uh, plugins. We would really want our, our RC bot to get more of a personality. So the way we do that, plan to do that is, is expose hooks so that you can make the built-in bot answer different things. One of the first things I'm, I'm looking at is, is doing an Elisa bot so that you can you can chat to it if you're lonely. Um, but maybe more useful things like Git GitHub notifications and things as well. Uh, Actually, Converse can run already without an IRC server, so you can you know, just use a loopback connection if you if you have a, like a work channel and you you only commu communicating through <coughs> Converse. Uh, but we hope to no allow not enough hooks so that people can customize things for their own use. And uh, the last thing I have on my, on my roadmap is distributed IRC avatars. So, you, so that we, we try to generate those avatars based on the, on the host mask, but that is often not practical. Based people are, are see from from hosts that are not their email address. Uh, so we're looking into using CTCP to query clients to ask them uh, if if for for a Gravatar email and then use that to generate the avatar. Uh, and we have we have some progress on that already. There is an experimental branch. 
that will probably land in, in 0 0.5. And of course, uh, if you want the feature, we would very much appreciate uh, pull requests. This code is open source and it's free to hack on. Of course, if it would be nice if you come and talk to us first so that you don't waste your time with, with re-implementing something that we do. Uh, yeah, so that's... Uh, I've left a little bit of time. How much time do I have left? Ten minutes. So I have a little bit of time for questions, I guess. Uh, I have one. Uh, it looks really, really good. Uh, would it make any sense to extend the support to include the Yab as well as IOC? Yeah, that would be very possible because we have a, a connection class which is separate and it would be easy to subclass that and, and to use the net jabber or whatever instead of uh, the RC thing that we do. Of course, you would need an asynchronous jabber driver, but I don't think that would be a huge thing. I'm not using jabber, so I'm not hugely motivated myself, but uh, I think it would make sense to, to do it as well. Are there any particular issues with particular browsers being supported? Well, we don't support all browsers. We, we, we support all of the evergreen browsers, like uh, Chrome and, uh, and IE10 and uh, Safari and new Mozilla versions. But like IE6, there's just no way. You have to have web sockets. And, and, uh, so yeah, mod mo all modern browsers are supported, but, but most all browsers will really not work. Including Android WebKit, I suppose. Yeah, use one of the screenshots I pasted was from my Android tablet. Yeah. So uh, recent Chromes and Android work fine. I haven't tested it much on the 2.0s, 2 but uh, Android 4 should be, be perfect. I'm also, I also have gotten a, a Firefox cell phone from Salve uh, in the back of the room, so we, we do uh, plan on, on testing and making sure that it works properly on that as well. So. I can uh, report that it works on the Jolla phone with the selfish OS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so both this award is pretty good. Um, yes? You say that you are keeping the the connection even you disconnect from the browser and you get all the all the log back and everything? Yeah. How, how are you doing that part? Well, uh, so the core, the core, the core class is is uh, sending both push notifications and all the messages to the Reddit store, and so we store all, all of your. Uh, if if you don't have any listeners to the push notification, it just doesn't go anywhere. Or the push it just doesn't go anywhere. But when you connect your browser, you just fetch the connection list from Redis and, and uh, get all the messages. Okay, so you keep the connection light on the server. Connection lives on the server, yeah. We're using uh, the IO loop keeps all of the connections that are live in the same thread. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if you're running a uh, server with many connections, I really recommend using uh, the EV server. Otherwise, I, I was doing a test server and with the pure Pro version, I started getting CPU, CPU issues around 15, 20 uh, clients that were all using many channels. But uh, with the EV, it scales really well. Is there any plan to be able to use it as a bouncer? Well, uh, I, you mean like to connect the native to uh, a normal client? Yeah. yeah, I did. I have been looking into that, and there is a plan for it, but it's not on the short-term roadmap. Maybe uh, one or two versions from now. Yes. Have you considered using um, Apache Cordova for your um, mobile front end? Because since it's an HTML application, and that's a, the, the hybrid frameworks that can give you all the native clients for free. Yeah, I, I have been looking into, into using either a phone gap. The only reason I wanted is uh, to make it easier to, to be able to put in an app source so that you don't have, because probably people have a little bit of problem using, using that bookmark thing to add it on their, to their home screen. Yeah. Uh, and I really want the native push notifications, which I can't do uh, pure pro. So, uh, I'm, Either Cordova or uh, I'm a little bit confused by those. Uh, for because Cordova PhoneGap is using is something else, which is also open source, right? Well, uh, PhoneGap was was open source, completely open source, and it was turned into an Apache project, which is Cordova. So that is the same project. All oh, right. Okay. Can I configure a client to fetch my users from an uh, LDAP server? Uh, you could do that. Right now it's just stored in Redis and uh, I don't have any uh, support for that, but I think it would be really easy to implement as well. Because uh, authentication is, is really separate and uh, since we're using malicious, I know there's already authentication 
um, libraries from from English. So right now it's <coughs> not supported, but quite easy to implement. All right, was that last one? Uh, so if you have any further com questions, you can come to IRC Perlorg at the Convos channel. So connect, you can go get Convos at uh, Convos.bi. We actually reduced the dollar version domain because it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 